Hey guys, Florian here, good to see you. In this video we're gonna talk about how you can get sharp photos every single time you hit the shutter button. So, we're gonna break it down into three topics. We're gonna talk about a few basics, how you can achieve sharp photos with every single camera or any camera, we're gonna talk about autofocus settings, how to improve them and make them more reliable. And we're also gonna talk about manual focus. A few tips and tricks to every single setting, autofocus, manual focus, a few basic settings, simple, easy, effective, and you can do them literally straight when you go out and take some pictures. Basic tip number one is how to hold the camera. I know there are some sort of photographers out or YouTube tutorials when people actually holding a camera with one hand and my, fine, they might get a sharp image if their shutter speed is high enough, the IBIS is on or the lens stabilization is on but in generally speaking you guys want to make sure you hold the camera properly, ideally at least with two hands to give it nice sort of stability when you use your camera. Or when you put your camera towards your face, you got the third point, a resting point in your face to stabilize the camera to make sure you get a nice sharp image. Basic tip number two would be your focal length. What sort of focal length do you use? And you want to make sure that your shutter speed is at least twice as high. So basically, let's say you would use a 50 millimeter lens, your shutter speed should be ideally as high as one hundredth of a second to minimize any sort of shake or vibration or you might shake a bit. So always make sure that your shutter speed is at least twice your focal length. Basic tip number three is what sort of aperture do you need? Do you need to aperture of f1.2 or do you need to aperture of f8? You don't want to shoot a landscape image with the aperture of f1.2 if you want to have a nice crisp image where everything is in focus as well. So f f12, f16 is probably the better option than f1.2. So always keep your aperture in mind to make sure that you get a nice crisp image as well and as much in focus as you need to or want to. And fourth and last basic point would be if you use a tripod with a camera make sure that your IBIS is off, your lens stabilization is off and that you use a self timer when taking an image with a tripod for the simple reason the IBIS or in lens stabilization can cause some sort of shake with a tripod and you won't get a sharp image either. So always make sure your IBIS and lens stabilization is off. Use a 2 to 10 second self timer when pressing a shutter button so the camera and a tripod got time to get rid of a shake and you will get a nice crisp image. Let's come eventually down to the autofocus settings. First of all, we need to decide if we want to shoot single point focus or continuous focus. Let's say you would shoot a portrait, then you're probably good off with single point focus because your subject doesn't move as much around in a frame as let's say a cat, a dog, your kid or anything else you would like to shoot. So therefore, if you want to shoot your cat, your dog, even your kids, then probably continuous focus might be the best because you got some sort of moving subject in your frame and your autofocus needs to move all the time and needs to keep up with the pace of this person or with the animal. So having a moving subject, continuous focus, if you have a still subject which doesn't move much at all or you can tell to stand still, then use a single point autofocus. When you've chosen your autofocus mode between single point autofocus and continuous autofocus, you can decide what sort of autofocus point you would like to use. You can choose single point autofocus, you can use zone autofocus point, you can use a zone or tracking and you can use all at the same time if you want it. Again, it depends on a subject you would like to shoot. If it's a still standing subject or you go out and do some travel photography and you can set your single point autofocus somewhere at a house as an example and you take an image, then a single point autofocus will do absolutely fine. If you got a moving subject, then probably a zone or white tracking autofocus point will be the best to keep track throughout the sensor with the subject you want to shoot. Or you choose all 
and see how you get on with it. I personally use the majority of time single point and zone trucking. Zone trucking for anything what moves or might moves a bit and single point everything what I can control or can tell a person to stand still. So those two options or in total four options you need to choose which focus point will work the best for yourself. You also can adjust your auto focus point the size of it. As smaller it will be, as smaller your auto focus point will be, as more accurate your auto focus will be. However, a little downside to this is also that the focus will be a bit slower. If you make this cube bigger, then your auto focus will focus faster, but it might be not as accurate as a small point. So here's the thing, you need to try out what size matches your style of shooting a best. I personally got it set to a medium size, rather a bit smaller than too big, but this is just how it works for my personal needs. Keeping in mind, as small as the focus point will be, as more accurate it is, but also the focus will be a bit slower. As bigger it is, as less accurate it is, and the focus will be faster because there's more space the camera can focus on it. So give it a try, see what size works best for you. I keep it somewhere between small and medium and this works just fine for myself. Face detection is a very nice feature nowadays and it makes photography a lot easier when shooting portraits. However, a little downside to face detection is that your whole face will be in focus. So if you want to have your eyes 100% in focus, you need to switch on the face detection plus eye detection to make sure 100% your eyes are nice, crisp and clean. Otherwise, with the face detection, it might happen that the camera focus on an overall face instead of your eye and your nose is in focus, your eye is slightly out of focus. So keep this in mind, face detection, definitely handy feature to have to get the face in focus however downside is to it that the eyes might be not in focus all the time so definitely switch both features on when shooting portraits face detection plus eye detection to make sure that your eyes are in focus as well and you rather have the eyes in focus instead of the ear so the ear can be a bit unsharp and your eyes are in focus this is what matters in this moment so definitely switch both settings on face detection and eye detection last but not least for the autofocus settings go under your custom autofocus settings there are a bunch of pre-programmed autofocus settings available for fast moving subjects or suddenly appear subjects so definitely worth checking them out and see what is your subject you shoot the most which of those presets will work best for you definitely a nice feature and definitely good to check them out see which focus mode works best for you but also you could program your autofocus custom settings by yourself this is entirely up to you again but i definitely recommend having a look at them checking them out and see which preset will work best for your shooting style coming down to the manual focus settings and they're a bit easier because of course there are less settings to program because you want to shoot manual lenses either vintage lenses or third-party lenses without any connection towards your camera so first setting you need to switch on with any camera shoot without the lens to make sure that the camera knows that you attach the lens without connection points towards the body and lets you allow to shoot any images or some images when you're out and about second setting would be then your focus assist you should switch on which help you to focus when turning your manual lens also make sure that you switch on your peak as well and give it a nice bright color you can choose between red blue white it's entirely up to you what's your favorite color is this basically indicates you when you twist the lens what sort of subject is in focus in this moment also a setting you could consider to switch on is a focus assist punch in so this means basically as soon you turn your lens manually your camera will punch in and give you a bigger picture of the subject you focus on you can switch this off and you can punch in with your back wheel if you wanted to to get the same effect this is entirely up to you if you like that the image punches straight in when you zoom your lens ring or you punch manually in i personally like to punch manually in but that's just my personal preference 
And the last but not least the tip I would say if you really wanted to have a bit more sharpness in your image you could add sharpness clarity structure in post production in Lightroom, Capture One, Photoshop, whatever sort of program you use. However, you need to be careful, it's easily overdone and it looks fake and it doesn't look as natural as it comes out of the camera. Or even if you have like an old vintage lens, you want this bit of soft feeling, you want a bit of unsharp image because that's the reason why you shoot a 60 year old lens, for the feeling, for the flair the lens gives your image. And with that said today guys, I hope you liked those tips, they've been helpful. Let me know in the comments what sort of tips be new to you or what sort of tips been beneficial to you. And with that said my friend, like, comment and subscribe and I'm gonna see you my friend very soon in the next one. Go out and take some pictures. See ya!